But in Luke 7, 36, it said, And one of the Pharisees desired, desired him that he would come and eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping. Listen, think about that weeping. And began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. And Luke seven forty eight says, And she said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Let us pray. Father, we ask you, Lord, to us behind the cross. Lord, we can't do nothing without you. Right. Lord, I ask you, Lord, if someone here tonight, Lord, is or this morning, I mean, is some more in their life that, that this just needs a special touch for me. Lord, I know I've been there before. Lord, I need every one of us knows that even walking with you, Lord, we find ourselves as the brother preached last night in dry bones and we get discouraged and we just have to go to you for the help that we need to get through the day. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing. We thank you, Lord, for the preaching, the singing. Lord, it's been a blessing, Lord. Lord, I ask you just a few minutes. You bless me, Lord, behind the cross. Give me what I need and we ask these things in all your name. Amen. Amen. A little introduction I'm going to do before I get to really in the preaching, amen, is a song. It's a really old song that I picked up somewhere. I don't really sing it. Uh, I ain't going to sing it, but I'm going to just talk about it a little bit as I go through and get to my message. Because it just hits on all of my points, amen. It's sitting at the feet of Jesus, watching and waiting every day. Yeah. Trusting in his grace and power, safe and guide me all the way. Yeah. Leading me at the feet of Jesus, he com commands to go and stay. Trusting always in his wisdom, safe to guide me and obey. Yeah. Seeking and still at his feet of Jesus, I will seek no other place. For there is a calm and but a promise of the faithfulness of grace when he tolls of life are over. Listen, I don't know about you, but I have some tolls. I have some troubles. I have some trials. I have some faces, things sometimes that people, nobody knows but my wife. We you know, you know, she's there. Amen. But the Lord knows it when nobody else does. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. He's always there. The fullness of his grace. Listen, I think about that. Amen. When the race of the earth is ran by the evening shadows and gathers, find me there when the day is done, the course is set in at the feet of Jesus. When I love to kneel and pray, till the goodness and his glory drives the shadows from the way. Listen, listen, it is still, hey, it is still, and never will be. Listen, the feet of Jesus, amen. Listen, I don't know how long you've been saved, whether you ain't saved or not, listen, you got to go to the feet of Jesus every once in a while. Our problem is, amen, we're not going back to the feet of Jesus. Hey, we got to go back, amen, where we got saved at. we got to stay there sometime, looking at Jesus. I think about the Noah's Ark, and he put the wind in the very top of it. Why do you think about that amen because you got to look up and keep looking up stay looking at Jesus because listen you get his eyes off of him, you're going to fall amen listen you're going to fall listen how you know I've been there before amen preacher you say that you failed absolutely amen there ain't nobody in here say I've made a mistake I've done wrong I'm glad I can go to the feet of Jesus and get the help amen listen getting the help is what it's all about amen and looking and talking to him and getting things right listen the point number one is this a place of mercy and forgiveness mercy Amen. I don't know about you, but it means something to me. Amen. He was a sinner. Listen, she was a sinner, and she knew it. Amen. As the brother was talking a while ago, he knew he was a sinner. He knew that something was wrong. He needed to get things right. Listen, just get it right then. Amen. 
And I, I, I'm so thankful and thanking of God when the singing started the other day and, and I started seeing the young people and people coming out to the altar during the singing and talking to God. Amen. Maybe they was praying for the meeting. Maybe they was talking to God for something going on in their life. Let me get this thing out with something to just show out a little bit. Amen. Yeah, right. That's what church is about, church. Yeah, sure. Hey, it's about everybody coming together and following the God and, and being in one. Amen. Yeah, right. You know, I think I'm about to I tell the church sometimes you take a log chain. I'm old country boy with a log chain. I'm pulling wood or I'm pulling a truck out of a ditch or I'm doing pulling a tractor or doing something. Amen. But you take one of them links out of that chain. Listen, that chain's no good to you. Amen. When we all come together and link together and serving God, we can get something done. Amen. Why? Well, because God is in the midst of it all. Amen. Like her, she was a sinner. Perhaps her degree may be different by a skill of some of us, amen. Maybe it's not what we at, or maybe uh, the forgiveness is not what you think it should be. But listen, sin is sin. Bible said, I got many uh, virtues to go, but I'm not going to get them all. Romans 3 and 3 and 3, everybody knows it, amen. For we all sin and come short of the glory of God. Right, right. Yeah. There's nobody here can jump up and I think about me saying, look, get up on a limb and cross it. Hey, I've never sinned. Hey, I've never did this. Once I got saved, I've always been straight. I've never done wrong. I've always done what was right. I'm just going to tell you something. Listen, come to the altar now because you still lie. Yeah. Hey, because I'm telling you right now, I don't care who we are or what we are, we all fall short sometimes. Yeah, sure. hey, the, the thing about this lady, as she went down with her hair, she didn't have much, amen, but she took her hair. Yeah. Listen, I can't get no hair. I couldn't do that, amen. But it's not taking it, take your hair. Something is precious to you, women. Amen. And she took that normal. In them days, it was it was so worth something. Amen. And she took it to the feet of Jesus, and she took it and washed her hair with. It. Listen, listen. She knowed where to go. Amen. Right. Listen, we got to know where to go. Right. You know, I think about it in life walking, and you know, people's watching your life, and I tell you, Mike back here is a blessing. <laughs> yeah. Brother Weaver, you mean a blessing. <laughs> Brock, you don't know it. Maybe he does, but he's a role model in my life. He's a little boy. Good. Good. When I was a little boy, I was 15 years old, 16. He's older than I am. Y'all might know that, amen. <laughs> well, I didn't know, but I, you know, I, I was one of a little scrapper, amen. And I scrapped a little bit, and and I, and I know, don't, I know it's a place for it, amen, but Rocky was a scrapper. Don't jump on him, amen. He's like a bulldog. You know, you're knocking down, it's going to keep coming back. Hey, God uses people like that. I'm going to get off that a little bit, but you know why? He wants somebody going to keep jumping back. When life hits him, he's going to keep coming back. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. Listen, he wants to use somebody that's going to run for Jesus, amen. When things get hard and gets tough, maybe souls ain't being saved, and you see, I look at my wife and say, what's going on? Is it me? Is it me? But you know what? So I push you in places to make you stronger. He puts you in places to make you stronger. I think, hey, hey, God's delight and He shows mercy and He forgiveness and those who, listen, admit they are sinners. Amen. Yeah. Listen, as the brother said a while ago, hey, we don't go looking for the Lord. No. Hey, we don't go looking for Him. He looks for us. Right. The Holy Ghost goes to draw it. Amen. But it comes a time that we got to commit. We got to commit to him. Hey, this is in my life and this is wrong. God, I need some help with it. Amen. This woman, she seen him. She knew he was going to be in the house. So she, what she do? She found her way over there, Brother Weaver. She found her way because she needed some help. Amen. I'm glad I come. I'm getting some help. Amen. I'm glad I came. Hey. I've been, I've had offered, I've had many opportunities to come and and come up here, and I, I've just said, well, I, I didn't got time. I got to work, you know, you know, but it's, it's working preachers, amen. I say all of us work, amen, whether you hold a job or not. But I, my job, amen, is running about fourteen hours a day. I leave at twelve o'clock at night. I run all night long. Get home about twelve, and I cut the grass. I do things. I maybe run to the church and work for three or four hours. Come home. My wife has supper on the table. I take a shower. I eat a little bit. I rest a few minutes, and I go to bed, amen. That's the routine through the week. It's really rough, amen. But listen, I do it. You know what? Because God's told me to, amen. When God tells me, say, hey, you quit, 
And God's going to take care. I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry about it. I'll do it, amen. God ain't told me to do that, amen. I've heard some preachers, amen, and sitting here and say, just give it up. Quit it, amen. Just, just do it. I pray. God's not giving me liberty, amen. So I got to listen to him, amen. Hey, listen to me. Secondly, amen, a, a place of healing, amen. At Matthew 15 and 30, amen, it says, And the, and the great and multitude came unto them in heaven with him the, those that were lame, hey, blind, dumb, and, and, blind, and, and, and many the others that cast them down at the feet of Jesus, and he healed them. Hey, I, I was thinking about so many that I've seen healed. Hey, Brother Doug come down to the church and we were praying for him and no doubt, amen, God saved him, amen. God touched him. You know, God, you know, God saved somebody. Your brother Doug said, hey, I, I knew it was okay. Hey, I can tell you stories that, that I've seen people saved. I remember a time and I was a, about a 15, 16 year old boy in the church and it got real thick like it was yesterday and like it was this morning and, and singing was going on and had a preacher come up, visiting preacher, going to preach, amen, and, and he was singing a little bit and the altar started getting full and people crying, standing up like their brother back there all over the place and tears running down. And, hey, I, I did, I did, nobody so knew what to do. The preacher, you know, just singing a song, just kept on singing and there's a, a man in the church that had given him six months to live, he come down right in the middle or amen until he knows to get to Jesus' feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about getting to Jesus' feet. Yeah. Then when he got down there, amen, I can never forget it. The whole church started coming around because they knew what was going on. That's link I'm telling you about, amen. Yeah. It's got to be connected, amen. Right. And we all got to around him, amen. I remember I just was crying at the back and didn't know which way to go. And, and listen, he later, listen, I'll tell you a story short. He got up, amen. He went to the doctor a couple weeks later. The doctor put the x ray back up there from about a year back or six months, whatever it was. Uh, uh, maybe a month, I don't know. And he put it up there and he took another x ray to see what he was going to have to do to the uh, uh, chemo and stuff at or, or radiation. And, and he, he stuck it up there and he said, Listen, where are you being at? He said, he said it's, I can see it on there, but it's dried up. What did you go to? He said, I went to the feet of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Hey, Jesus can touch you, amen, when nobody else can. Hey, I believe in healing, amen. I believe in the healing of the Lord, amen. But you got to know where to go to, amen. you got to know who can do it, amen. Yeah. We must clearly believe that there are healing at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. Hey, the Lord's been through, me, uh, through my life and done many things for me. I've seen so many miracles around our little community and our and churches and different ones. And hey, so many things happen. So many people I've seen go through crossroads. And I, I had a brother Rocky told one time, and uh, it sticks with me a lot. I've used it, amen. He's been a, I told you, a role model in my life looking at him and, and the thing. You know, y'all just don't know what I knew years ago. And then when he got saved, amen, he never looked back. <laughs> I believe when you get saved and God gives you a vision, He will give you a vision. I don't know if I'll tell you something. He ain't going to call all preachers. He ain't going to call all evangelists. He ain't going to call all... But I'm going to tell you what He will do. He's going to give you something to do. He might be holding the door at the back door, greeting people as they walk in. Being faithful, be the first one at church, make sure somebody's there, amen. amen. Right. Getting there and say, preacher, is there anything I can do? Can I sweep the church? Can I do this? Listen, he's going to give you a vision, something to do for him. Right. People's watching you live. Right. Let's tell my church this a lot. So I'm never going to pick this up. Oh. Where you work at, where you, where you go to grocery stores, but well, this is what they see. Yeah. They see your life. Yeah. Right. You're right. How you walking? Yeah. How you talking? Yeah. Yeah. I go to the beach and I be talking to people and they say, You gotta be a preacher. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing about the Lord. <laughs> I but said you gotta be a preacher. How do you know that? Because the way you present yourself. Yeah. You know, we ain't none, like I've said before, we none of us perfect. But I think we need to strive to be. Sure. We need to strive to be. 
Hey, hey, God's been good. Hey, 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 and this and through this, amen. The, and the brother Weaver last night was talking about the feet of Jesus and preaching there, amen. And, and I said, Oh Lord, well, I've had to preach behind him, amen. And the brother, other brother come in, and of all, amen, and, and uh oh man, it's, it's been good, amen. Hey, it's been good. Hey, I said, How am I gonna compete all that, amen? I'm just gonna do what I'm just gonna be Donald White, amen. amen. Hey, I'm just gonna be Donald White. I'm not gonna try to be Weaver, I'm not gonna try to be the other big team preacher. I'm just gonna say, Hey, just be myself, amen. 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 And be at home. Amen. I don't know about y'all. I may be making a mess, but I tell you what, I feel pretty good. Amen. amen. Hey, I feel pretty good. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. Somebody's praying for me. Thank you. Amen. Hey, number two. Number, no, no, listen, number three here hey, is, a, is a place of releasing from Satan's bondage. I'm not going to go much over there. The brothers didn't jump all over it. Amen. In Luke 8 and 28 and 30, uh, 36, I was going to read, but I ain't going to go there. Hey, this man was wild man. Yeah. Hey, he just had no clothes on, couldn't be chained. He was wild. Have you ever known somebody in your life that was just rough? Yeah. Yeah. I had an uncle one time. Remind me of this fella, amen. He had clothes on. But I'm going to tell you, he'd get a, little, he'd get a bottle of, uh, uh, of liquor in him. And he gets a couple of drinks in him. He want to get his knife out. He'd, he'd cut you, amen. I'll tell you, go back to a story. I'll go back a little, a little bit and we'll try to be quick with it. When he was young, he was 18 years old, he got a little bit of liquor sitting on a bar somewhere. And somebody comes saying something he didn't like or wasn't appropriate or what it might have been. He took his knife out and cut a feller pretty bad. Well, he had to go to prison for a little while. Well, my pastor, amen, as, as a young preacher, amen, loved everybody, started going down to the place and getting them on Sunday morning and bringing them to church. And he did that. And he did that. So later on, as this young man got older and he got married, he still ain't saved, which his wife is coming to church. And, but he had so much respect for that pastor that he'd come every once in a while. Why? Because we back when he was lost and he was undone, he went and got him out of prison and bring him to church. Yeah. Listen, that's our jobs, amen. Yeah, right. We have, we gotta love people. We got we gotta be caring, amen. This fellow right here, you know, maybe they cast him out in a, in, in, a, in a cave. Nobody cared about him. But I'm glad that he knew who loved him, amen. Yeah. And he, when he seen him coming, amen, he fell at his feet. Yeah. It's all about falling at Jesus' feet, amen. Yeah. Hey, our pastors missionaries hey listen and preachers we're just tools for God right. you know some you think about different kind of tools and, but we all get into the same place we're still serving him we're trying to do something for him you know you can just be yourself but do all you can and that's all we can do church is do all you can I, I, I think about it is when he got saved but at the feet of Jesus, he found something, amen? Yeah. I think about a lot of us, amen, when we was down and lost and, and done, amen? Hey, he found a pardon. Yeah. 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 Not only did he find a pardon, he found some peace. Yeah. <laughs> and he found some power of the Lord, amen? Yeah. Then he had a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had a purpose. Samuel, you got a purpose, brother. God gives something to you in your heart. You got a burden for it, amen. And, and you're trying to do all you can to get it there, amen. amen. That's our job. Yeah. You're a little church, and you, some preachers have been there and here, and you, you, you know, I think about my little church, and I'm striving to get it, do all I can. I'm working there, and I'm doing it. Uh, you see me up there on Friday afternoons, I get off work and work in the dark. Uh, I work up there Saturday in the dark, amen. Trying to do things to make it look more resentable to people, amen. amen. Hey, it's, hey, hey, God's house looks look good. Amen. Hey, if your house, you're going to paint the walls and do carpet down, make things look great. Hey, it's our job to keep the church looking good, amen. amen. And if everybody pitches in together, amen, amen. and get to work done for the Lord, amen. amen. I don't know where that come from, but it's still good, amen. Yeah. I said that, but they, listen, there's victory over Satan, amen. Right. When you come to know the Lord, Satan is, he's going to be on your back. Right. 
I ain't going to never tell you. Listen, I will never tell you. You come and get right with God. Start walking with him, talking with him, and you won't have no more troubles. I ain't going to tell you that. But I'm going to tell you this. He's going to be on you harder than ever. He's going to fight you in every hand. But I'm going to tell you what you do. Just go to the feet of Jesus. <laughs> and I, I'm just old country boy. I said, Lord, hey, hey, Lord, here I am again. <laughs> this is my favorite saying. Lord, I need your help. Right. Hey, Lord, I need your help. I was sitting back a while ago, and the kids up here just singing, and my heart was just flowing, amen. And right. I looked behind the rock and said, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I, need a, I need a handkerchief, amen. And I didn't bring one with me. He gave me one to kind of wipe some tears, amen, because sometimes I just get to crying, amen. Right. And I was just back there just to crying, tears flowing, even last night, amen. Then preacher was preaching, singing was singing, and I was just to crying. Why? Because there's something that's changed in my life. Yeah. God changed me, amen. Yeah. Listen, I can remember, hey, the brother was talking, about getting out there with my granddaughter, amen. She get out there and she'd hit a ball. I would holler a little bit, but listen to me. I'm gonna tell you, I never would do it if I couldn't holler in church, amen. Why? Woo! He saved me, amen. He changed my life. I ain't the same person I used to be. Hey, when he changes you, so he makes a difference in you, amen. I don't know about you, amen, but I'm telling you, God is real. Amen. He's the best thing ever happened to you. Amen. I'm going to tell you, you know what? You know, hey, you know when you know, you just know. <laughs> when you get around some people that love the same Lord you love yeah. and want to praise the same Lord you do, yeah. it's just, hey, it's, you just don't want to go home. <laughs> hey, you just want to stay the midst of, I want last night, and as I know yesterday, people had worked all day. I've though I've been there, amen. And you're sitting there and you're tired and you're enjoying it. He said, just let me go home and sleep a few hours and I'll come back. But listen, I would just love to stay all night and preach, amen, and sung and just keep on singing. But I know we got to sleep. We got to rest every once in a while. Right. And come refresh this morning. Listen, I know a lot of people, 9 o'clock, that's early. On a Saturday, amen. And most of you are going to be back here tomorrow, amen. Listen, I wish I could be here, but I got to be at my own church. Hey, hey, listen to me. I might just come up one day, get a bus, amen, and say, hey, we're going to go up here at Foster and stay all weekend, amen. But listen, it's good, amen. Hey, it's good. I know why. I told my church, and I tell you, I, I, wouldn't it be nice church? Listen to me. Preachers, would it not be wonderful? When the spirit breaks out really good, you can just do this right here and just bottle it all up in a bottle and close the cap on it. Yeah. Then yeah, when you're at your own church or you're somewhere else, say, man, and that ain't nothing, not a moving, you can just kind of open it up a little bit. And it's, hey, they start shouting, people start shouting and jumping and running around. Hey, man. It doesn't always feel like this, brother. Sometimes it just gets kind of a little dry. The preacher was preaching last night, amen. You know, when that happens, preacher can't always bring it. The preacher can have the best message, what God has given him. But you know what? The church has got to be wanting it. I like what the preacher said. He said, you know what? The thing about really having one and people started coming to the preacher. We're not going to have one. We know what we don't. We know we, we always, you know, we, we're not going to have one this year. And he starts thinking about it and starts praying about it. And he starts calling different preachers to come and start putting stuff together. Why? Because church was wanting something. Amen. Hey, you know how revival is supposed to start? It don't start because you, you get your big old thing wrote up and we're going to have a revival. This is the preacher who's going to be here. Revival is supposed to start in the church. Right, right. Supposed to start in the church, amen. That's how a good meeting starts is in the church. I said it's bondage and he was in it, amen. Not only that, amen, after you get these things right and you get saved, amen, there's a, there's a place of learning. Yeah. Hey, there's a place of learning. Hey, in Luke 10 and 39, he, you know, he talks about learning, amen. It talks about learning. You learn it from the word of the Lord. And hey, he says it's all about him, amen. Right. 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 And she and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and what? Le heard his words. That's Luke 10 39. Sometimes, all the time. We got to find ourselves in this Word of God. I'm gonna tell you something. A man tells me, tell me that you, uh, I ain't used to wearing this, brother. I guess you'll know it by now. You tell me you talk to God all the time. 
I talk to him. He's my best friend. But if you ain't reading your Bible, I hardly believe that. I don't know about you. I can go to reading the Word of God. And he goes talking to me. He starts telling me things. If you ever want to get closer to God, you got to get the feet of Jesus. But this isn't the feet of Jesus right here. Getting in this Word and reading God's Word, it will help you. Amen. He will give you knowledge. And you know what? And you need something to help somebody. And you're going down the road. And somebody says, Preacher, I'm going through this. Or, or maybe sister so-and-so. Or, or maybe one of the kids says, Listen, read it. Remember it. I don't know about y'all. So I ain't writing in my Bible. I'm not marking nothing in the Bible. I don't went through many Bibles. I don't know about y'all wearing them out. I write in my Bible, mark them. I go through every page, write stuff at the top. Well, we need to find something real easy. I ain't got the memory that Brother Foster has, Preacher Foster, uh, or the, uh, the pastor, amen. I don't have that, uh, some of his knowledge, so I have to do things different ways. And that's okay. Right. Listen, find the way it works for you. Right. Hey, if you have to make your notes and stick it out the top with a little A or B or C to get you where you need to be, to find something when you need it, amen. We all have to find ways to do something to man. And I think, I think about maybe painting or maybe a carpentry. I, you know, I've always been kind of a hack of maybe doing it. I'm not a carpenter as some, amen. I'm not, I'm not a painter as some, amen. But well, if I need to do it, I can do it, amen. Right. Yeah. Just jump in there and do it, amen. Yeah. Right. Hey, but that's the same way with serving God. Listen, God would give you the tools of what you need to do it with if you're willing. Right. You're willing. But I said learn it. Not only that, it's a place of, of life. Yeah. It's a place of life. I, I think about in this is where, where we were preaching out of Revelation 1 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet yeah. as dead. Yeah. And he and led his right hand upon me and said unto me fear not I'm the first and I'm the last yeah. right. I tell you old John he reminds me of a lot of church members that may be down my way maybe be here I don't know today he met Christ and died Jesus said Get up, John. Get, I think about get up, John. I want you to go, be alive, and prosper. He wants us to prosper. He, you know, everybody's not going to live this world and leave a lot of money in the bank, which you can't take it with you no way. Maybe you ain't going to have that big old big house that you love to have on top of a hill, maybe 30 acres of land, maybe a fence around with horses, amen, with a big old barn. Hey, all that stuff is wonderful. Material things sometimes is good to have. But listen, if anything is going to keep you from serving God, I hope I say just like I am, just working and serving God. You know, this is the thing. You ever thought about this? God knows what you can handle. I've seen so many, I, I've seen so many that God give a better job to. And all of a sudden, you know, they kept saying, Lord, just give me a better job. Just give me this job. Or he takes this away from me. I'm going to start doing more for God. I'm going to be in the church. I'm going to start doing this. You know what happens? We get the better job. Then forget about God. Forget about God. He's been good. He's been good to me. I think about this song when I was going to sing it in the middle. I said, well, wait till I get done. I'm going to try to get through it fast and... I ain't no singer by no means. But kind of goes along, I think about all the men that went through crossroads. And many of them got saved. And, you know, some of them is pastors today. <laughs> some of them are teachers. They married and serving the families in churches and, and paying church tithes and, and doing things what they're supposed to be doing. I stood in the courtroom. The judge turned my way. It looks like I'm guilty. Now what do I say? 
I spoke up your honor. I have no defense. But that's when mercy walked in. Mercy walked in and pleaded my case. He called to the stand. God save in grace. The blood was presented that covered my sin. Forgiven. When mercy walked in, listen right here. I stood there and wondered, how could this be? If someone so guilty had just been set free, my chains was broken. I felt born again. That moment. When mercy walked in, mercy walked in, pleaded my case. He called to the stand, God saving grace. The blood was presented that covered my sin. Forgiven when mercy walked in. Amen, preacher. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.